Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another one of these talking at the camera type of videos thing. Today, we're going to talk about sellotape or scotch tape or sticky tape, depending upon what part of the world you're in. Now, we're all aware of how awesome duct tape is and how it was used, for example, to fix the lunar rover during the Apollo missions. But many of you aren't aware of the amazing science applications of plain old sticky sellotape, scotch tape, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it tape from now on. So first thing about it is I'm sure you've noticed that as you pull this out, you uh, have to generate you uh, have to generate force. And you might have noticed if you've been trying to work with tape that sometimes it likes to stick to things via the process of static electricity, right? How it will want to attach itself to my fingers. And this is kind of happening, but it's really hard to show here. But as I bring my fingers here, it's kind of what, yeah, it's not working too well here. <laughs> that static electricity is because you have got electrons getting moved around and the tape is becoming charged on one side, right? And this is partly a consequence of the, the adhesive interacting with the tape in a particular way. Point is, when you pull a tape out, one of the bits gets charged with electrons, the other bit uh, loses its electrons. And what happens is, of course, those electrons want to go back, right? So they will jump off the tape and they will try to move across the space to uh, neutralize the charge. Normally, in an atmosphere, this doesn't do particularly much, but if you, if you take a roll of tape and unroll it in a vacuum, right, those electrons, they uh, don't have any air to slow them down. So they accelerate through the charged, magnet charged electric field and slam into the other side of the, the tape gap. And uh, what happens is they actually generate x-rays. If you take, if you unreal tape in a vacuum, you get x-rays. That is like, you know, crazy. That kind of blew my mind. In fact, it blew a lot of people's mind when they, this was discovered. Uh, there's a, a, some, there was a test or a paper where they set up a device where they unrolled a bunch of tape in a vacuum chamber and they had a guy with his finger and x-ray sensitive film and they managed to x-ray his finger by unrolling tape in the vacuum. And it really is as simple as the, e the electrons come off, they jump across the gap and then when they hit the tape, the tape is a dielectric. So the electron slows down and through a process called Bremsstrahlung, which is German for breaking radiation, the electrons generate x-rays. And that's how a regular x-ray uh, generator actually works. You know, you fire electrons at like a plate, like generally something like rodinium, I think is what's used in a lot of commercial x-ray systems. Okay, so general tape or regular tape generates x-rays. How awesome is that? But um, it's also a Nobel Prize winning material because you might have heard about nanotechnology and specifically graphene. Graphene is where you have a graphite. Now, graphite is made of carbon. It's made of layers of carbon, lots of little layers of carbon in a kind of hexagonal grid with a very weak forces holding them together. Well, you know, this is the material that when you roll it up, you get things like carbon nanotubes. So it's very important in nanotechnology. Well, it turns out that uh, the first people to really isolate sheets of graphene did so with a more or less commercial tape. Now they might have used a low adhesive variety, but what they did was they took the tape, they uh, applied it to a piece of graphite, and they would put a piece of graphite in the middle and then they'd stick the tape together with the graphite in there, pull it apart, and then apply the tape to a silicon, uh, a silicon slide that they could use in an electron microscope. And in there, after a few iterations of this, they found single atomic layers of graphene. And for that, and its related work, they won the Nobel Prize in physics. It was a huge, you know, a huge deal to isolate this stuff. And it all comes down to plain, more or less, garden variety 